What's up guys, Flosif Floke. Not most people, we got vintage time behind the camera. And today, I can't even believe it myself. We got Wicca Phase Springs Eternal. He's about to slide through for an interview. If you like the stuff that me and Vintage Ty have been producing as not most people, why don't you do us a favor and hit like, subscribe, and comment. I don't even know where I'm gonna start. Hey, what's up? We're here with Wicca Phase Springs Eternal in Seattle, Washington, and I'm, I'm pretty stoked. So actually, talking about Seattle, you must like really kind of vibe with Seattle because you know, like it's got that gloomy, like David Lynch kind of like era to it. Yeah, it's like colorful. It's always like super dark and gray and stuff, but then the trees pop and like the, you know, the wildlife pops. But I love it. Yeah, definitely the, the aesthetic of the city. Foggy, murky, rainy. Yeah. Gloom. Yeah, gloom. You know, the vibe of the city is kind of what the vibe of Wicca Phase is. So it helps paint that picture a little bit more. So you don't really think of yourself as Wicca Phase. You think of Wicca Phase as this other thing that you've created? I think now that Wicca Phase dominates so much of my life, yeah. I consider myself Wicca Phase. All if right. that makes sense. But it took you a while to get there? Yeah, for sure. And I would then, say 2018 is like the first year where I fully embraced it and leaned in yeah. like very hard. You got the name from some just like random like internet aesthetic girl. Yeah, exactly. It was like a memer or like what was it? She was like a net artist. So she would do like web comics and yeah. stuff like that that were really dark. Then I sent her some early demos and I just said, what do I call this? And her email back was Wicca Face Springs Eternal. And that was, that was it, just yeah, one line. Yeah, Caroline Bren. Is that her name? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Caroline Bren. Shout out. Before, you were Wicca Phase or thought of Wicca Phase as a project. Did you ever have an actual Wicca Phase or is that something you're still in? Or? No, it's not. I didn't really. Um, and I think that's like the fun of the name. It's, yeah. like, it's kind of a troll. I think she was kind of just saying that my music is like the equivalent of a Wicca Phase <laughs> where it's like someone just, you know, for a few months making dark music and yeah. whatever. But then it stuck and the longer it goes, I think the better the name is because- It's it, super sick. Yeah. I was like, Talking to this girl like on Instagram, nothing ever came of it, but I was talking to this girl on Instagram and she was like, yo, you have to listen to this album, Corinthiacs. I was like, I listened to that so many times. Like I listened to it like, like on repeat for like a, a, a month. You remind me of like an esoteric Morrissey. In the same way that I can listen to the Smiths, I can now listen to your music. And hopefully you're not as racist as Morrissey, but like uh, I, we'll find out. I, no. I don't think I don't think I am. Okay, good. <laughs> I, I don't think you are either. You got like 40 years, you know what yeah. I mean? See how you feel about immigration in 2050. That's right. All right, cool. <laughs> Everyone always wants to talk to you about Tiger's Jaw, and I'm sure that gets like super annoying. It's okay. It's okay, I'm just saying. <laughs> and what I want to say is a lot of people you see in music would take success like that. People with less success in music would take a success like that and, you know, maybe ride it out for like 10 or 12 years. And you just had like the confidence to not only like not completely stop, but like stop doing that and then completely focus on this other side weird project that's kind of for a genre that doesn't really, it, it exists now, but it's still very, and it's like Nate, it's Nathan, nascent. It's infancy. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I had a George Bush moment there for a second. <laughs> yep. And I just think that that's a that's pretty impressive. What made you decide to just kind of switch up on him like that? Uh, I wanted to do electronic music. Mm -hmm. When I first started listening to music, my favorite stuff on the radio was like that wave of '90s Euro dance yeah. that like made its way into top forty radio, like La Bouche and like uh. stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, I think so. I Ace of Base. So. Ace of Base was one of my favorites. I think they're kind of racist, though. But they're so good. Why know. does like everyone race that? I'm not gonna know. cut that. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> but uh, so I liked that kind of dance music, and then the first CDs I was buying were Puff Daddy, Mace. I liked East Coast, like like Bad Boy Records, yeah. stuff like that. Biggie, and then like Busta Rhymes. Then it like wasn't cool to listen to that when I got when I was like 12 or something like that, and my friends were listening to Blink 182 and stuff like that. But I liked Blink 182 too, so I would I just kind of stuck with that lane. So it was that, but then the dynamics of, I mean, there's a lot of reasons why I left Tiger's Jaw and I was still doing wig phase while I was in Tiger's Jaw for like two years, at least a year, maybe two years. But I wanted to just do home recording stuff because like when you're in a band, it's not so easy to just come up with stuff and then quickly write it, teach everyone 
those songs, release it. Like it's more, it's so much more of a process. The right? turnaround is not fast enough. No, the turnaround was so slow, and I didn't want that. So I wanted to do home recordings. I guess that like stuff that I was listening to when I was nine and ten years old, like found its way back into yeah, my Yeah, I hear brain. a lot of mace in your, in your work when I listen to it. <laughs> I was like 19 or 20 and so that's a good time to be weird, I guess. I mean, any time's a good time to be weird. I, I wasn't but, gonna say it. Well, I was, continue to get yeah, weirder, so yeah. it's not like that. And it was also like, in that time where the people that I was following, like the aesthetic pages that I was following where they'd be posting like Renaissance art and also like, clip art, like 3D animated spinning clip art yeah. of like nonsense. Yeah. They would also be posting like Lil Ugly Mane songs yeah. and Salem or Crystal Castles and yeah. stuff. Like when I heard those artists, I was like, all right, this is taking what I liked when I was younger, but stripping away the, the bubblegum aspects of it and adding like a darker edge that I like in music. I was like, what? Well, that's what I want to do. And then so we kind of went over this when I asked you about Wicca phase, but like, were you actually into the esoteric before you called it Wicca phase or is that something you got into afterwards? Here's the timeline as far as like the esoteric stuff and the occult stuff. I was into aliens when I was really young. I was buying books for preteens like and talked about UFO encounters. Or so not like Behold that. the Pale Horse? No. Definitely not, no. Like, <laughs> stuff like top top UFO sightings of, you know, of the 20th century or stuff yeah. like that, right? And it'd just be like pictures and... And then, I kind of got out of it for a little bit just because I wasn't sure where to go from there and I just kind of lost interest. But then I got back into it and it might have been through Twin Peaks that I got back into alien stuff because like later on in Twin Peaks, you get the alien overtones. Yeah. So in trying to do like a lot of internet research as to like the meaning behind stuff in Twin Peaks, it brought me back to the alien stuff. And I was like, oh, I remember reading about some of the stuff as a kid. Granted, Twin Peaks is fictionalized, but you know, it brought me back to that stuff and Project Blue Book and stuff like that. Like they're talking about that in Twin Peaks. But I feel like as you go deeper into alien stuff, then you start to get into conspiracy culture. You know, if aliens are such a thing, why? aren't more people talking about them? Why aren't they, you know, why aren't we hearing about scientists exploring the possibility of extraterrestrial visitation or contact? So that's where you get into, you know, what is it, like the beginning of X-Files where they have like, government denies knowledge and yeah. like, stuff like that. Then you get into the conspiracy aspect of it. Then if you go, deeper into conspiracy culture and you think, all right, well, there's there's stuff that's being, well, allegedly, there's stuff that's being suppressed. Who is suppressing it? The elite, the Illuminati, whoever, right? The Freemasons, the Rothschilds. And there's- Knights Templars, what's up? Right, exactly. Yeah. And then from there, I feel like you get into a lot of the occult nature of, or what people think is the occult nature of those families. I don't mean to keep adding like conditional statements or like hypothetical, like speaking as if these are things that people say happen. I'm just speaking like that because I can't prove it myself. I can't yeah. prove that the Rothschilds are reptilians or that Alistair Crawley is like, you know, the great grandfather of George Bush, but you read about that stuff and um, the ritual nature of what these people are doing behind the scenes. So that's, that's my timeline. I kind of forget what the question was, but... Uh, Do you ever feel, are you ever afraid you're accidentally like opening yourself up for like demonic possession? Yeah, it, I don't fear it, but you wonder like, if singing about stuff like that and kind of playing around with it isn't irresponsible yeah. in some ways. And if this is, real and there is there are powerful forces that that we don't see which there almost definitely is uh you don't really want to mess around with it i think it's one thing to talk about it the way i do in songs uh it's another thing to tell people that you are the devil or you are a demon or something mm -hmm. like that or you you know i feel like some people do that and just like lie about it and they're just like doing it for marketing purposes, right, to see energy. Right yeah, exactly. Uh, mine comes from like more of an, a nerdy place, an actual, a genuine interest in that stuff, and also trying to 
make love songs more interesting by mixing in Put a stuff sigil that in there, me. you know? Here's the nerdy answer for demonic possession. Oh my god. What should I put on? Should I put on here? So it takes me to like spooky shit in like New England and Seattle and Lynch, and you also have like a lot of Lovecraftian influences. You're pretty close to New England in, in Scranton, and that's a spooky ass place too. New England is for sure, yeah. I can't tell if it's actually spooky or if I've just like read too many Stephen King books. Is it like legit spooky? I think it's pretty spooky. Like the 13 colonies themselves are pretty spooky. There's like weird communities in Pennsylvania that you'd read about of like German, German immigrants coming over and forming like, I don't want to be vague and say occult, be vague. like occult communities within Pennsylvania, but there definitely were in like Gnostic communities and stuff like that. And I mean, straight up, like obviously there's like the whole witchcraft aspect of, of New England. Yeah, it's spooky and <clears throat> spookier, I think after the fact too, because a lot of those people were like tortured and killed. So you get the idea of like there being hauntings there. And so yeah. which is probably the Stephen King. Yeah. Major influence of Stephen King there. I haven't read much Stephen King. Uh, I should. Because he, he draws a lot of influence from Lovecraft. Too, yeah. And he kind of has created this, in much in the same way that you've like kind of created like Corinthiacs as like this world that your stuff exists in, he's created like his uh, Castle Rock or like whatever his like shit is. I'm going to kind of veer back into reality for a second. Um, I'll pass. <laughs> okay, bye, bye. You see, Okay, fine. That was a good one. I like that. <laughs> when like Thrax House was getting energy, shedding layers to go down to like Goth Boy Click, were you kind of like, oh, this is a good energy here? Was there like an energy to it where you're like, this is this is something we got going here? Thrax House, I had a great feeling about. It just got so big that it was hard to do anything as a group. Yeah. You know, like it was like. 30 or 40 people in it. So how do you make a decision on anything? So with Goth Boy Click, I think the the goal was to just take the the music aspect of Thrax House and condense it a mm. little bit. And then, all right. Oh, we got Smart Death. I'm Ooh. stoked. Yeah, me too. Hell yeah. I've seen him every day for the past two weeks. <laughs> so, so you're not stoked? Oh, hey, what's up, dog? Be careful of this cord for this thing. Do it. If you want, don't worry, I'm not in the middle of anything. There's food. And yeah, the energy was good. It was hard to tell at first, but the first time I went to LA was for a show with pretty much everyone in Goth Boy Click. And once I met them, yeah, I was like, the energy is great. And these are people I can trust. I didn't know them at all, and they didn't know me. So I thought like it was pretty crazy that they would go out of their way to like just help me out like that and bring me out to LA. Especially after we spent our whole lives like getting told not to like try meet people on the internet. You yeah, know, now it's like that's true. Yeah, I've heard you say that you're like skeptical of people. How so? Yeah, well, I don't know. I've heard like you said like you're <laughs> in working with people in music. Oh yeah, you're skeptical of people's motives and you're skeptical of what people. So thank you for doing this interview with me because you could have been skeptical of me too. No, of course. I mean, I probably would have been skeptical if I hadn't watched the other ones. Yeah. Um, I trust Mac right, cool. <laughs> So I am skeptical because. I mean, I used to just respond to emails from anyone and that helped a lot early on because I did end up meeting some people. Like I met Doves, Doves just emailed me beats one day. I listened to them and now he's one of my best friends. But there's other people too where you meet them maybe through a friend or something like that and you don't even know how well your friend knows them. They're like, look, we got a mutual follow, what's yeah, up Yeah, exactly. And then, I mean, I've been, not burned a lot of times, but there's been a few times where I've been associated with people just because we've been in the same picture together or something like that. And that person turned out to be sketchy. So now I'm way more skeptical of, of people and who I work with. Like, I'm just cautious. And I think you have to be, uh, you know. Initially, when like Little Peep was coming around, you were like starting to be skeptical of him or no, you weren't at all? Peep, I was skeptical of, not him personally, I was skeptical of Schema Posse because I think we were like a little bit salty because before they were called Schema Posse, they were calling themselves Love Gang, which was like uh, the name of a Horsehead and Cold Heart song. Yeah. But they were also like growing pretty quick and I think we were just like salty about that. But I didn't know who was in that group. I mean, I was skeptical just because of how well he was doing so early on and how much people were talking about him. And I was like, well, like no one is this good. 
really? Turns out I was wrong, like 100%, and he is very good and <laughs> very authentic. But yeah, I was skeptical um, because again, like, just, it doesn't always do it for me to, to hear from a friend that this person is cool, right? <laughs> and I remember when people wanted to put Peep in Goth Boy Click, it was Horsehead and Coldheart specifically. Horsehead was the, the one I remember coming to me and being like, we should put Peep in the group. And I didn't even know him. And I was like, man, like, I at least want to talk to him or something, like get him on the phone yeah. and talk to him. And I called him that night or he called me or something like that. And we talked for 10 minutes and he was so cool and normal and authentic. Like I just knew instantly. And normally it's not within 10 minutes that I'm like able to suss out a person or something. Yeah. I'm also not saying that I'm a great judge of character, but I had a good feeling about him. Like I was like, he really seems to come from like a good place. He's knowledgeable about what we're doing. Definitely not a pretender, like at all. So it worked out like, yeah. And then when I met him, I met him in person a week later and it was, he was a hundred percent legitimate. Legit. Yeah, 100 percent. Yeah. yeah, but I was skeptical of him, of course. I'm naturally skeptical of good. anyone. I was about to make an alien joke. Good to hear. But, no, I was saying the, the skeptical <laughs> UFO conspiracy theorist. Yeah. That was just, you know what I mean? That's Not, me. well, there's like two questions that are kind of like a little rough, but you, All right. how do you feel about people on the internet that try to like imply that like GBC has any sort of involvement, which is like absolutely ridiculous. I want to hear like your response to that because it, it bothers me like a lot. Like I feel for you guys whenever I see any like, I just want to like fucking strangle people. Listen, no one knows anything about what happened that night except for the people that were there, right? So it's insane for some 14 year old on the internet to think that they know yeah. something that happened, right? Why they would assume that we had anything to do with it is insane because there's no indication. Like there's some narrative that is like fictional narrative that's in people's minds that stuff was going bad between Gross and Goth Boy Click and that he was gonna leave the group and everyone in the world knew except for us, this is what the story is. And once we found out, you know, we couldn't take it anymore. It's so insane because I don't know where that came from. Well, I know where it came from and I know who the people spreading it are. But uh, it's so you can't far- You elaborate on that part? No. Okay. But you can guess. Right. And uh, it's so far from what the actual reality of it is because the way Gus stuck his neck out for us on that tour is so crazy. And the way he put on for us is more than any of us could have ever asked for. Like, we wouldn't ask him for anything, right? Like the same way that I don't, I never ask Tracy or Coldheart to like, put on for me or promote my stuff or something like that. I'm not begging them to get me on songs so I could have my own exposure, right? Mm -hmm. And it was the same way, the dynamic between us and Peep was the same way, where we were just happy to have another member that fit in to our group and really like condensed everything that we were doing into a very cohesive, and I don't wanna say marketable, but you could show people Lil Peep and they would understand what Goth Boy Click was. If you show them my music, they probably wouldn't understand as much. But once right. they hear his music, they can hear your, your music. Exactly. And it's like this bridge that makes it all like possible. Exactly. Yeah. And that was a huge benefit for us, right? So that alone is like something that we owe him for. He did two tours. He just brought Goth Boy Click and it was open. like. If you look at the bills, like the flyers for those, it just said Lil Peep and Goth Boy Click. And he was like, whoever, he would tell us all the time, whoever wants to come, come. So that second tour, I guess it was the come over when you're sober tour. I remember he was like, listen, I want everyone to come. Everyone can come on the tour. There's like this much money set aside for openers, which is just any tour, right? That's how it works. Stuff like that, work it out amongst yourselves. And it, we did, and it was super easy, like, it was a gift that he gave us. And it was that tour that I think encouraged a lot of us to pursue music full time and really run with it because we saw the exposure that we were getting and we saw that it's possible to like make a living off of this. So the fact that people would suggest that we were so greedy as to want more and 
take it to the lengths of killing him is insane. <laughs> it's insane. It's like absolutely insane. And the fact that people think that they know better than we know is also insane. Man, people are really adamant about that stuff. And I think a lot of it is just, I think it's them trying to come to terms with something that they can't really understand. So they put the blame on us because we were there, which yeah, we were there. Like, man, there was a lot of people on that bus too. And you don't see them getting blamed. You know, you don't see goth boy click in New York Times talking about how the other people on that bus had were hated by peep and how how people's gonna you know leave them and all this stuff so i don't know it's some garbage going back to conspiracy culture one of the problems i have with conspiracies in general it seems like people have a hard time just accepting that horrible things happen and they need to come up with some sort of engineered, like manipulated scenario to explain that horrible thing. Mm -hmm. I haven't heard like too much from like your guys' camp about it. I mean, publicly, you know, I feel the most bad for, for Mac Ned, like Me too. through it. It's just fucking awful. I haven't seen too much like public defense for him. I mean, I don't know how much he wants me to say. I know early on Mac Ned didn't want anyone talking about it mm -hmm. at all just because he felt like it would, you know, you start that conversation and then you get all those people who are very vocal about some insane theory that they have going at him again and it just opens up the, the wound, right? Also, no one else has really asked me about it. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, maybe this is the first step. I also don't think Goth Boy Click does a lot of interviews. Really? <laughs> so you're the first person to ask me about that and no one else knew what that bus was like on that tour except the people that were on it. It seems easy for people to paint this group as villains, which is really weird because we're probably the softest collective like in rap, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like we're the most sensitive and like our music <laughs> is the most sensitive and emotional music like in this scene. So for people to think that we're like actual murderers <laughs> is really insane. Speaking of 14 year olds, there's a 14 year old boy, that sounds even sketchier. So speaking of, there's a 14 year old boy on the other side of that camera. God, no. So speaking of like younger people, there's this like kid on the other side of that camera and they're just like super into making music and they're, yeah. they're super about it and they just like, whatever. What advice would you have for them starting out to like get rolling on this path? Meet people, build relationships, get really good at writing songs, fail a lot. <laughs> play as many shows as you can. There's a difference between like wanting to be a musician because you think it's cool and your idols are musicians and you think that that's a good way to get attention and being a musician because it's what you feel like you have to do and because you're a creative person and music is the outlet that you feel was given to you, right? Yeah. That's how I feel. From you an early age, too. I knew I wanted to sing. I was like, on Lyric websites with a remote as a microphone, like just like singing yeah. to LaBouche songs or something like that. Yeah, that's full circle. Right? Right? There we go. You're not gonna be Lil Tracy in a, in a week, you know? Don't buy reposts. No one's listening to that. People see through it. Sorry to any of my friends on reposts, <laughs> but uh. Little end cap, who's your favorite rapper? Lil Tracy. Oh, good one. Flow Sif Flow, not most people. A big shout out to Wicca Phase, Thank you. Springs Eternal. Thank you. He thinks of himself as Adam, but we think of him as Wicca Phase. Sorry. If you like the stuff that me and Vintage Chai have been making, hit like, you hit that subscribe button, and you leave me a comment, and I'm sure you have comments. Hateful, nice, preferably nice, but whatever. And we out. Ba 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 ba.